We made it to the Premier League with Leeds United. We have completed our summer transfer window. Let's go see who we've signed. So every single summer transfer window, when you get newly promoted, is an absolutely huge one. Have we been able to do enough to at least match or beat Barnsley's point total? Let's have a look. We'll quickly go through the outs though. Angelo Endrecker, who was our starting left back, for our championship season, has left to join at Newcastle for, was that £15 million pounds there or thereabouts? Uh, he was a decent option for us, so I would have been happy to keep him as a backup option, but £15 million, uh, pff, can't turn that down. Next up to leave was Xavier Embayamba, who's went and joined Feyenoord for a fee that could rise to £15 million, £11.75 million pounds initially. Again, another option who I would have been happy to stay at the club and be a backup for us, but... That amount of money we have got to make back because we did spend quite a bit. Matty Cash, our backup right back, has went to join Sporting Gijon for £10 million straight. 30 years old, English. Um, again, another one I wouldn't have minded keeping a hold of, but at 30 years old for £10 million, you're never going to get more than that amount of money for this lad, so I was happy to cash in. Next up to leave was Sebastian Caceres. He's went and joined Al Shabab for a fee which could rise to £9 million. Another backup centre-back we had options available to us that were cheaper coming in to replace him in the squad so happy to see him go everyone else who's left pretty nondescript a lot of loans obviously a lot of our youngsters getting their loan game time out uh, Daniel Bentley was our backup goalkeeper he's left and joined Arsenal on a free transfer um, I was just happy to get him off the wage bill to be quite honest with you uh, apart from that everyone else is pretty much sorted let's move on to the ends where we start with our one and only loan signing, Luke Thomas from Aston Villa. He's going to be at us on loan for the rest of the season. He basically replaces Endrecker in the squad. And I was happy to do this. He's not paying anything in terms of a monthly fee. We are paying the entirety of his contract during this season. But um, a good English backup which will help with squad registration. Pietro Porcino signed permanently. We did see this boy in January as we approached to sign him on a free transfer. He is now coming in as our backup central midfielder, the Kevin Magia. I will give this boy a plenty of game time. Kana Aiden, another one that we signed on a free, this time joining from uh, Galatasaray. We have accepted loan bid, so we won't be seeing him this season, but another good signing in my books. Heinz Honef, which I don't think we've seen, signed on a free from Hoffenheim. He's actually going to come in and be my backup goalkeeper. Again, another one who I want to give as much game time as humanly possible. Cup competitions and stuff like that, he will always be starting. Two-star current, five-star potential. Good to get a youngster in. Next up was a bit of a gamble from me that didn't really play off was Jason Westbrook. He looks like a very, very good winger for 750k. Um, English as well, but two-star current, three-star potential. He's in our under-23s. I will try and loan him out, but um, a little bit of a field transfer this one. Samuel Bernat comes in to replace uh, Xavier Mbayumba as our backup centre-back. 850k from Slovan Bratislava. Uh, he can play at left-back, perfect at centre-back, fantastic physicals, decent mentals. Needs to work on that heading. That's one of the major downfalls with this boy. But other than that, he's absolutely fantastic. And another one who <laughs> I've got a lot of players who I need to give game time to. Next up was another field signing. Darren Hughes from Dundee United for £1.1 million. He looked like a great little left-back option who could potentially come in and be our backup for the season. But having getting him into the squad, I'm not particularly pleased with exactly what I'm saying. Again, another one. I'm going to have to try and loan out and just hopefully not make a loss on him. Now we're starting to move into some of the bigger boys. Alvaro Yepes from Deportivo Cali for £1.3 million. A Colombian regen who will come in and probably be our starting right midfielder as long as he's fit and not on international duty, which he is on a dear. Uh, very physicals to dream of. Mentals are good in the right areas. That 17 flair is a big boon. His technicals are decent as well. Needs to work on his technique and his passing, but we've got him doing that in the individual training. And I think he's an absolutely fantastic signing for 1.6 million quid. 1.3. Javier Cortez joined us from Atletico Nacional for 1.6 million. Another Colombian, this time for the left-hand side. He is very much brought in as a backup to Jim Walker, who will be our starter on that left-hand side. And again, just another good young Colombian player who didn't cost us a lot of money. Three-star current, four-star potential. Again, game time needs to be given. Maybe our most complete signing, at least in terms of how good he is for his position. Federico Piaggio joined us from Boca Juniors for 5.25 million. And now, if you remember back last episode, I said right back wasn't really an area where I particularly needed to strengthen. 
and I found this man. <laughs> I just had to sign him. Physically, he's complete. Absolutely complete. Mentally, he's good in the right areas. He still needs to work on improving some of these attributes, particularly the likes of his passion, uh, his passing, uh, not his passing, his positioning. He's off the ball, could do with a little bit of improvement, but in that regard, he's probably still better than Armando Harewood, who would have been our starter. And technically, he's fantastic as well. Not so great in the attacking areas, but fantastic in the defensive. I'm just, I'm, I'm absolutely dumbfounded that this guy cost us five million. Now, this boy will be our competition for Ian Chapman and probably is going to be our starting striker, at least initially. Roman Vlasek joined from Victoria Pleasen for £5.5 .5 million. Now, he's literally the complete opposite of Ian Chapman. Technically, he is unbelievable for an advanced forward. He's just unreal in that position and he really does have everything that we need for an advanced forward in the technical department. Mentally... He's pretty close to um, Ian Chapman. They've both got benefits and drawbacks to their game. Uh, physically, Ian Chapman does have the advantage as well. So we have two absolutely fantastic strikers that we can rotate between if need to. When one's out of form, we can bring the other one in, bring them off the bench. But I think, at least to start with, I'm going to start Roman Vlasek up front. Next to join us was Chris Dewelbis from Basel for 6 million. Now, my assistant manager doesn't rate him. Doesn't really rate him. Three star current, three and a half star potential, 22 years old. I really, really rate him. Uh, he reminds me a lot of Vicaro. Uh, maybe not quite on that level, but not too far behind. And for the sort of fee we paid for him, six million quid is absolutely nothing. Uh, he's technicals for a deep lying playmaker, 17 technique, 18 passing, 16 first touch. Just spot on. His mentals are pretty good as well. Uh, for the areas he's working in physically again, not the best, but uh, balance of 16 is the main component for a deep lion playmaker. I'm happy with his signing and he will be first choice. Next up was our left back, probably the most difficult position I had to fill. Ewald Conradi from Bayer Leverkusen for £7.5 million. Let's ignore the downward arrows for now. A 19 year old German left back who I think is going to develop into something a little bit special. Um, not quite there at the moment. Three star current, four and a half star potential. Physically well rounded, mentally well rounded, technically decent, at least defensively. Um, hoping to see some massive improvements from him. If there's a left back that comes up, becomes available, maybe I might end up make, looking to make the move. Obviously, we're not going to be at Leeds United for three years to allow him to fully develop and see how much we can get out of him. So we're always looking for improvements, but I'm relatively content with him as my starting left back. And finally, the big centre-half, the main guy, Gilson, signed from Brazil for £15.5 million. Is he the same level as Dvorak and Andrin Meda? I don't think he is. I think he's close. Don't get me wrong. I think he's pretty close, but he's not quite elite, which them two boys were, especially in hindsight. Um, but I think for the 15, what was it, 15 million were paid, 15.5? Yeah, I think he's well, well worth the money. And he comes in straight away as our best centre-back. And our defence, I think, for Leeds United is the best we have ever, ever had it. In terms of our starting lineup, then, when we are at full strength, this will be it. Hugh Griffiths, of course, remains at the club. He signed a new deal. He did have interest from um, Borussia Mönchengladbach. But uh, we managed to tie him down for another five years, which is absolutely fantastic. Piaggio's comes in, obviously, as the right-back. Garinsky, who we signed in the January transfer window of last season, uh, maintains his spot at centre-back, hoping to see some improvement from him over the course of this season. Uh, Gilson and Comradi, of course, the new signings alongside Jubilbis. Uh, Majaya, he's going to be fighting for his spot this season. He's not going to be a guaranteed starter. Porcino obviously comes in and offers us another option in the centre of midfield, so he's going to have to up his game in terms of his development if he wants to maintain as our starter. Yepes, of course, who we've spoke about, he's currently on international duty, so he won't feature today, but um, he will be our starter when he is available. Uh, Granger is our starting attacker midfield centre. I looked, trust me, I looked to try and find somebody who was a step above Richard Granger, and I couldn't quite find them. So he keeps his spot at least for the first half of this season, in attack and midfield. Uh, Walker, of course, keeps his spot at left wing. Developed lovely last season, became natural at the left wing. I needed to give him a season in the Prem to see how he can get on. And then Vlasek up top. Um, Ian Chapman drops to the bench, becomes our second choice striker, and it's a fantastic second choice striker to have. So survivors this season, Griffiths, Garonski, uh, Mejia, Granger, Walker, so a lot more survivors from our championship season than we've ever had previously. 
And then we've still got the likes of uh, Chapman, of course, Kazim Etem, our backup right winger, who will be starting today. Um, and some others, uh, Abia Ezia ended up keeping his spot as well, being an English lad, available all across the attacking midfield. Felt like it was a good bit of business to keep him at the club rather than try to sell. Um, so that's pretty much it for our incomings. I'm relatively pleased with how we've been able to handle ourselves in the transfer market. Squad registration didn't become an issue. And we managed to keep our foreign players to limited to 17, which is absolutely fantastic. And we've got ourselves set up for the start of this season. The first game of which is at home against Arsenal. <laughs> Great start. Obviously, champions three years ago. I'm not sure what they did last season. Finished in third. Um, so, a massive, massive uh, game in our first game. Unlikely to get the win today. Hoping for a draw. We'll have to wait and see how that goes. But let's have a quick check to see if there's been any major sales in our other former clubs. And I know there's been one. Lewis Montagnier leaves... Barnsley after, what, six years? Seven years? Absolutely unbelievable. He's left to join Atletico Madrid for £71 million. He did develop into an elite striker and he banged in the goals for Barnsley. I believe he finished top goal scorer in the Premier League last season. And he has now left. And Tony Herrero has left to join West Ham for £23.5 million. They have got themselves an absolutely fantastic left back. We signed him for three and a half. in our very first, uh, no, was our very first summer transfer window. No, second one. We were in the championship when we signed them anyway. Doesn't look like any of our other players, and there's not many of them left at Barnsley, to be honest with you, but none of the others have left. Pasquale Frankie, the biggest signing, the replacement for Montenegro. Not a bad one. Birmingham. Have you broken me heart? Any sales? Ah, oh, Yavs. Alberto Salenza. Oh, any others? I don't think there is. So Salenza, of course, we never actually managed him, but we did sign him on a free for Birmingham before we left. And he has now joined FC Bayern Munich for a very cheap deal. 63 million. Disappointed with that. Looking on the ins though, Luke Daly, the biggest transfer, joins from Huddersfield, the left back who, of course, we had for 33 million. Not a bad signing. And finally, we know who a sale is for Huddersfield. Obviously, Luke Daly leaving the club. Samuel Stank was left the club as well, joined Slavia Prague for 5.75 million. Not a bad deal. Um, we signed him for 2.2, I believe. Biggest signing, Lewis Cook. Boring. 31 years old. Stupid Huddersfield. Right then, that's enough of our former clubs. Let's get into today's first, well, today's first and only game, which is of course against Arsenal. So they come at us. I remember getting battered off Arsenal a few times. They've got no rate. Oh, they've got one. Adam on the right. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Look at the state of him. £81 million from Borussia Dortmund. And he is absolutely top quality. Unbelievable. One of the best regens I've saw so far this save. But apart from that, they've got all uh, regular players, normal players. I mean, Guri's still sitting up top for them. He's developed fantastically on this save. 28 years old now. We're likely to get stuffed this game. But I am going to go for it. We'll see how we get on and see how our new boys perform. First highlight of the game comes three minutes in. We pinch the ball in an advanced area with Jim Walker. Richard Granger plays it back to Gilson. Go on, Dubalbis. Use your playmaking ability to find E-Term. Piaggio is overlapping on the right inside. The ball's whipped in. It's cleared. Please win the ball back. Oh, he doesn't. But they give us the ball back. That is absolutely fantastic. Majaya plays it to Jim Walker on the left-hand side. He drives in and shoots. Not far wide. 20 minutes in now. Not a bad start from us at all, I might say. 55% possession. We've had the majority of the shots as well. Half an hour gone and there's a corner for Arsenal. Can we get a clear? We do. Jubilbis wins it. Kazim at him. Get there first. He doesn't. He tries to cut out the pass and Liam but can't quite get to it. Brian... Gets past his man easily, past Piaggio as well. Griffiths with an easy save in the end. Was that the highlight? That was a highlight. Okay. Time is just ticking away. We get to the end of the first half. We have a final highlight. 20 seconds remaining. The ball's played out to the left-hand side for Conradi, of course. Our new German left-back. He bombs down the line. He's getting no pressure. He drives into the box and shoots. That That's the end of the first half. <laughs> that was a little bit of a strange camera change, but... Leeds nil, Arsenal nil, a fantastic first half performance. I'm really, really pleased with what we're seeing right now. We're on attacking as well. It's not even like we are sitting back. Um, maybe I should sit back a little bit and go positive. Are Arsenal going to punish that lack of a change? Yes, they are. <laughs> they absolutely are. Xavier Adam, of course, the regen who we pinpointed before the match, gets his first goal of the season. Reese James, the man with the assist. And uh, I'm going back attacking. Arsenal have now went on to the counter, so they are definitely... 
wary of our attack. They're not just sticking with their positive mentality, which they were doing in the first half and the beginning of the second. They have a highlight, though. 64 minutes in, they're in possession. Brian brings it down the right-hand side, cuts in, gets past the left-back and shoots. Griffiths keeps it in. Good lad. With only 28 minutes remaining in this match, we are going to have to make some changes. Ian Chapman seems an obvious one, bringing him in up top. Uh, Vlasek hasn't had the greatest game today. Pietro Porcino on for Kevin Magia as well. And we'll save our final sub. So maybe Javier Cortez for Jim Wark on that left-hand side. Um, just to see if the substitute can maybe spark something in us. But there's a highlight again. Arsenal with the corner. Adam again wins the header. Thankfully, this time, it goes slightly wide. Only a few minutes remain and we are going to get Jim Walker off. We're going to bring on Javier Cortez on that left-hand side. Walker with the corner before he goes off. It's played in. Kazim Etem gets his header on it. Gilson with the assist. And we have actually equalised against Arsenal with only seven minutes of the match remaining. I'm taking Jim Walker off as well. He's the man who provides the corner. Gilson wins the header. Etem pinches it at the back post. Absolutely fantastic. Should we stay attacking? We seem to play better. We seem to have played better on attacking duty against Arsenal. Time is ticking away. Only two minutes remaining. There's a highlight with 40 seconds to go. Oh, don't give the ball away. Jubilbis, pick it up. He's done so. Nicely worked by us. Porcino in the centre of the park. Gives it a grin. Jews drop deep. Back to Jubilbis. Conradi now on the left-hand side. Whip it in. Oh, it's blocked by Reese James. Don't be a counter-attack. Please. Oh, Gilson wins it. Conradi. Back to Granger. To Ian Chapman. Plays it through to Cortez on the left-hand side. Come on, boys. One more chance. Conradi, are you going to play it in? He is. Kazim, Granger, oh, what a save. What a save by Onana. I thought Granger was going to win it for us there. Oh, stick with this corner just in case. Ian Chapman to Gilson. Oh, he hits the side netting. So close. We have run Arsenal all the way in this game and we managed to get ourselves a 1-1 one, one draw. And arguably, we were the better side in that match. Absolutely, re really, really pleased with how we have performed in our first game against Arsenal. So there we have it then, a 1-1 draw against a side that finished third in the season last year is nothing to sneeze at, even at home. Um, but we've got a lot of games to get through. When are we going to come back? I do want to face Birmingham. So I think it's going to be Birmingham and Manchester City. Barnsley and Huddersfield episode after that? Ah, it's got to be. We've got to face our former clubs whenever we can. So look forward to that next episode. And if you're still here, please leave a like. Comment down below, where do you think we're finishing in the leaderboard? Are we going to be Barnsley? I think we are. I think, secretly, just don't tell anybody else, I think we're going to be Barnsley. Huddersfield and Birmingham City are a different proposition. Huddersfield 73 points, Birmingham 75 points. That is going to have to take a massive run of form um, all season, basically. So, we'll have to wait and see on them too, but I'm hoping we're going to be Barnsley quite comfortably. But anyway, boys, if you have enjoyed today's video, please consider leaving a like. And if you are enjoying my content, get yourself subscribed. But until next time, take it easy.